Greetings visionary minds. Today we embark on a trailblazing odyssey that transcends the ordinary and catapults us into a realm where innovation meets ingenuity. I am Siddhant Vadhwani, SDT manager at Newfold Digital, and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this exhilarating voyage where generative AI ignites the flame of creativity like never before. As we embark on this exploration, each section of our agenda will unveil a different facet of generative AI. from its fundamental workings to its real world applications and the challenges that come with its immense potential get ready to dive into a world where creativity and technology merge to shape the future of innovation generative ai is changing how we create isn't this what's trending in the field of technology and innovation then let's first understand what exactly is generative ai in a world where humans supervise and machines excel in generating innovating and inspiring generative ai is a powerhouse of algorithms and models that enable computers to create remarkably human like content this cutting edge marvel is reshaping technology empowering computers to create art compose music write code and more the technology learns from vast data sets produces outcomes that span from realistic to imaginative so how does gen ai work I'm sure you're pretty familiar of the input process output the IPO model which is widely used in system analysis or software engineering. As we can see there are three basic steps in world forming a database inputting a prompt and generating content. So let me use a simple example to explain how generative AI works focusing on text generation. In this example where I've given it a prompt to write a dialogue between two characters meeting for the first time in a coffee shop and uh, the generative ai model is trained on a large data set of movie scripts so it has analyzed the patterns it learned from the movie script data set and used the knowledge to create a new dialogue that fits the prompt it understood the structure of a typical movie dialogue scene including character introductions polite exchanges and a bit of background information generative ai works by using mathematical algorithms neural networks and deep learning techniques to analyze and generate content it breaks down the input data into smaller pieces such as words or phrases and then predicts the next piece based on the patterns it has learned during the training this process continues iteratively until the ai generates a complete piece of content it's important to note that the quality of generative ai output can vary depending on the size of training data set the complexity of the model and the accuracy of the prompts given to it while generative ai can produce impressive results it may sometimes produce inaccurate or nonsensical nonsensical content if the input prompts are unclear or ambiguous let's look at the different model types but before that what's a model a model is a set of algorithms that have been trained on a specific data set the different model types here are natural language models text to image applications and generative adversarial networks that scans So in in terms of natural language models you must have heard of GPT which is generative pre-trained transformer a natural language model which was developed by OpenAI after all this concept uh, has been used in several models before GPT but GPT has become notable for its large scale use of transformers and the ability to generate human like content for example ChatGPT you have GitHub Copilot GPT-4 which is now integrated within Microsoft's Bing etc then you have uh, the next one which is text to image applications so you can relate those with i would say operating systems like if you consider mid journey it's very closely related to mac os because it's a uh, kind of closed apis and uh, api centric art centric approach if you talk about dali it's more on the windows where you have open api and it makes use of the most superior ml algorithm and lastly you have stable diffusion which is more like linux based because it's open source Lastly talking about generative adversarial networks or GANs so here you have a generator and a discriminator and the discriminator keeps on giving feedback to the generator in in a way that it can continuously improve its ability to create realistic data so if you are a beginner then you can make use of paid services like midjourney or lensa uh, if you are more experienced you can try out different notebooks like google colab or jupyter notebooks uh, if if you are an experienced gen ai tech enthusiast then why, why not try github copilot and if if well you are a programmer then go ahead build your own models explore hugging face vertex ai maker suite etc talking about applications of generative ai uh, generative ai often referred to as gen ai has a wide range of applications across various fields due to its ability to generate new content uh, be it text images music or more so some of the applications that i've listed out through this word cloud are content generation natural language processing 
content enhancement in terms of images or audio you have creative art video generation game development medicine and healthcare data augmentation personalization simulation training language generation for coding storytelling content creation cyber security robotics fashion design anomaly detection and last but not the least software testing and automation these applications are continually evolving as generative ai models become more sophisticated and as developers find new and innovative ways to leverage their capabilities however it's important to use uh, generative ai responsibly and ethically as it can be used for malicious purposes such as generating deep fakes or spreading misinformation so what are large, large language models they are a type of artificial intelligence that uses deep learning techniques to understand and generate human like text these models are trained on massive data sets containing text from the internet books articles and more and they have become increasingly powerful due to their size and the sheer amount of data that they are trained on large language models have two primary functions first is understanding text and next is generating text various examples of large language models are gpt3 you have bert bart t5 excelnet and various others here is a list of most of the open source fine tuned llms and if you see the sizes of these llms range from 100 million plus to 540 billion until march 2023 and with the recent announcements of gpt4 google's gemini and other ai language models their sizes would be nearly 2 trillion moving on to prompt engineering it is the practice of crafting well structured and effective input queries or instructions for ai models particularly in the context of natural language proce- processing that's nlp and generative ai the goal is to elicit desired responses and obtain meaningful results from ai systems moving on to the how chatgpt bard ai uh, have been re- revolutionizing the software testing field and we have been witnessing a paradigm shift right since the evolution of software testing as we all know software testing has been around for decades dating back to the early days of computing when programmers manually tested their code for errors and bugs and now with the rise of digital transformation that has led to the emergence of new technologies ai and ml can be leveraged to transform the way we approach software testing these technologies help us identify defects earlier improve test coverage and ultimately deliver high quality software faster as most of us know continuous testing is the practice of testing throughout the software development life cycle to provide continuous feedback on the quality of the application chatgpt bard and ai can support continuous testing by providing real time feedback on test results by shifting left or shifting right and suggesting optimizations for test cases it can be used to generate test cases automatically based on users requirements while ai ai can also be used to analyze test results and recommend optimizations for test cases allowing testers to continuously improve the quality of their tests and with this let's take a look at some of the industry wide ai tools that we can leverage i'm sure some of the names might sound familiar but believe me there are tons of them out there that you must explore there's gpt4 bert github copilot code gpt as an extension to vs code watson assistant amazon comprehend microsoft lewis hugging face wit.ai tensorflow midjourney dali etc so it's time for a quick demo for this demo i will demonstrate how i have experimented with different ai models for various use cases firstly let's take a look at chat gpt where i'm using the default gpt 3.5 model and here i will showcase uh, different examples like how i have used it for automated test case generation test execution and result analysis and defect pre- prediction and prevention so firstly let's uh, take a look at the prompt i have given this which is write a python code to generate factorial of a number where the number must be taken as an input from the user and to come up with the most optimal code and unit test for the same so you can see it has come up with a pretty decent response considering try if uh, else catch blocks and also the except and also unit test are uh, related to the same so you can see it has considered positive numbers a negative number a string as well as a non integer number further i ask it to add uh, additional unit test such that it can break the code and it comes up with an interesting large number format where we also know that it basically causes recursion error so that is one such scenario it has additionally added and now considering those test case possibilities and the edge case scenarios i ask it to further optimize the original code such that uh, ne- the code never breaks and it has done its best to optimize the code and added a, a couple of other exceptions but it also mentions that um, at least this will handle uh, the stack overflow errors 
however if we still consider extremely large inputs it may uh, cause further memory issues so it is um, at least this code it says is more resilient than the recursive approach now next example is where i'm taking um, a, a scenario where you have a user who is logging into amazon.com and trying to purchase a book using his credit card and i ask it to basically come up with all positive negative and edge case uh, scenarios in a tabular structure and it has done that as well pretty uh, good response next what i do is uh, you can see certain data is missing so i ask it to come up with certain test data and also uh, add a column which which can highlight where um, certain tests are critical and those need to be automated on priority so you can see it has considered those same scenarios again come up with those test data and combinations as well as um, the priority of those that need to be automated in in terms of high medium and low so this is some scenarios that we can try out uh, experiment with ChatGPT. Same, we can do it with Bard as well. With Bard, there's one additional functionality where you can also upload images and ask it to describe um, what, what exactly is that. So in this case, you can see I've uploaded a model of dev test ops with AI, and it also highlights brilliantly uh, how AI has been integrated within the dev test ops and um, best practices and a lot of it around it. And you can further query it, and it will also explain on those uh, bases. Next, you have Google Labs. Uh, Google has come up with interesting AI experiments like uh, there's one which is recently introduced called Project IDX, where uh, this is used for your app development, where it's completely AI integrated. And uh, right now it's in the waitlist stage. So if you are interested, you can just visit labs.google and join the waitlist. Something similar with uh, the messaging system. So you can you have basically a new icon which shows there as help me write or just reply to this particular text. And you'll have AI generated responses for the same. It has also integrated with Google search, your Google workspace suite, which shortly I'll show you with Gmail and something similar with slides, docs and various others. And you have your notebook LM, music LM, um, notebook LM. Also, I'll show you a quick demo. This is basically project IDX. Um, you can just join the waitlist and um, as soon as you get access, you can experiment with this for app development. Then you have your maker suite. So maker suite is basically a platform that helps you to prototype with generative AI, which is provided by Google and it makes use of your Palm API. Then you have Notebook LM, which uh, basically you can use it to uh, upload certain documents and then query based on the same. So here you can see I've asked what are some best practices for dev desktops and it comes up with that accordingly. Again, it, is it important to follow all of these? It comes up with its own scenarios. Uh, what if my manager doesn't care about following these practices? What are some alternatives that I should consider? And it comes up with uh, pretty accurate responses for those as well. So moving on to DALI by OpenAI, uh, you can see I have asked it to um, basically create an image regarding Burj Khalifa's air aerial view with heavy rains and it has come up with decent uh, images as well. Something similar what we see with mid journey where you can always give it a prompt uh, by putting slash imagine and when you hit enter you can just prompt uh, in, in this format like uh, a person has asked for Andean country Abu Dhabi regional airport and uh, various other prompts based on which it creates this image and further you can optimize create variations out of it and so on. Moving on to uh, the Gmail workspace suite. So uh, you can see I have received an email and I wanted to basically create a quick response for the same. So what I do is I'll just give a quick prompt. You can see the help me write option over here. Click on that and just give this quick prompt, which says positively reply to this email. And when I hit enter, it comes up with uh, the best possible response that it can think of. And I can always play around with this. You can see by uh, re regenerating the entire text or refining it by formalizing, shortening, or uh, just playing around with the same. And lastly, you have your hugging face. So you can just visit the website and uh, check out the different models and, and so on and so forth. Generative AI has made significant advancements, but it also faces several challenges. Bias and fairness, quality control, ethical concerns, data privacy, energy consumption, limited creativity, data dependence, interpretable output, adversarial attacks, regulation and legal issues, resource intensive, long-term maintenance. Addressing these challenges is crucial for the responsible and beneficial integration of generative AI into various industries and applications. Researchers, policymakers, and industry stakeholders must work together to find solutions. And now seeing these vast capabilities and future use cases of how we can leverage AI in technology, testing and automation. I'm sure most of you already have this question in mind. Will AI take my job away? Well, the simple answer to that is what I'd like to convey through this image and it applies literally to all functions. So let me quote Steve Jobs. Technology is nothing. What's important is that you have a faith in people that they are basically good and smart. 
and if you give them tools they'll do wonderful things with them that's all folks thank you so much for listening so curiously i hope you all found this session really insightful so don't forget to share your feedback by liking sharing and reacting to this talk